There are three major trends that occur when we look at the periodic table that you really have to know about. And those three are periodic table trends, ionization energy, which is defined as it's the amount of energy that's required to remove one mole of electrons from a gaseous element. Uh, so really, we kind of just break that down, talk about just, oh, how much energy does it take to remove an electron from an atom? That's its ionization energy, right? But the formal definition is the um, uh, ability or the, the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from the element when it's turned into a gas. Electron affinity is giving an electron to an atom and how much energy is involved, usually released, when a mole of electrons is acquired by an element. And the atomic radius is really, you know, the size of the atom. And what's the trend in terms of the atomic radius as we go across and then up and down the periodic table? Okay. Well, first of all, ionization energy. We're removing electrons. And the trend is, as we go across a period on the periodic table, you know that we're increasing in terms of the amount of protons there are in the nucleus. And since all of the electrons, generally speaking, going across the periodic table are at the same principal quantum number, at the same n equals level, at the same first number in front of the, for the electron configuration. Well, what does that mean? That means then that as we place electrons into orbitals that are all an equal distance pretty much away from the nucleus, and we have a, an increase in the number of protons as we go from left to right on the table, we actually find that it is harder to remove an electron from an element as we go across. And so that means then that ionization energies increase as you go from left to right in a period on the periodic table. The ionization increases because it becomes harder to remove uh, electrons when you have more protons in the nucleus. Okay. So what happens then when you go down a group on the periodic table? Well, those electrons are farther and farther away from their nuclei at n equals 6, n equals 7 sort of thing, and therefore it becomes much easier to remove them. So ionization energies go down as you go down a group. They decrease going down. They increase going across. Okay. Oh, and by the way, for ionization energies, here's sodium. Sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So we try to remove an electron from sodium. And where do you go? Well, you start from the outside and you work your way in. If you're eating an apple, you can't start at the core. You have to start on the outside and work your way in, right? So when you add energy to sodium, what are you going to do? You're going to remove its outermost electron first. And which one is that? That's the 3s electron. And so there's a certain amount of energy, almost 500 kilojoules or so. If you add that to one mole of gaseous sodium, joink, you can remove the one, the 3s electron from sodium. Right. What are you left with? You're left with electrons that are very now difficult to remove because those guys are really close to the nucleus. And the 1 and the 2 electrons, so the 1s and the 2s and the 2p electrons are called the core electrons. You don't mess with the core, baby. So once you get the core of the apple, you stop eating there because, ugh. Well, here, you stop trying to take away electrons because, ugh, it requires way too much energy. Hey, aluminum is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. How many valence electrons does it have? How many outermost electrons does aluminum have? Sodium had one valence electron. This, the outermost number is three. So all of these are called valence electrons. And there are three valence electrons for aluminum. And aluminum, when you add energy to it, it can readily lose those three valence electrons here, gone, and leave yourself with core electrons in aluminum. So, you add enough energy, a nice little quantity of energy, and you can remove all three electrons, and that's why aluminum likes to form a three positive charge. Sodium likes to form that one positive charge. Can you mess with the car core? Uh-uh. And boy, if you're trying to remove a core electron now from aluminum, it's going to be really tough, because there are 13 protons in that nucleus holding those electrons in place. Very difficult to remove. Okay. Now... What about electron affinity, which is the ability to be able to give an element an electron? Well, you know, if it requires energy to pull an electron away to n equals infinity, well then, if you're giving an electron back to an element, it releases energy, generally speaking. So, the thing is, what happens 
as you go across a periodic table. Well, the proton numbers increase, right? So that means then there's more of an attraction for an electron when you bring it in. So the electron affinities increase too. So just like the ionization energy trend, the electron affinity trend is exactly, well, affinity by the way means that you like something, right? You have an affinity for something, you like something, you like chem guy, you have an affinity for chem guy, I hope. Anyway, so the thing is, as you go across, the proton numbers go up, and so therefore the electron affinity, how much you like, or how much, how much you like an electron, or how much energy is released when you bring in that electron, increases. So the electron affinity values go up as you go across, just like the ionization energy did. And what about going down a group? Well, it's hard to, to be able to release a lot of energy when an electron is going from n equals infinity to 7. Like say, let's say n equals 7. As opposed to an electron going from n equals infinity to n equals 2. That's going to release more energy because it's closer to the nucleus. So therefore, it's not as favorable going down. So just like the trend for ionization energy. Ionization energy? increases going across and decreases going down. Electron affinity increases going across and decreases going down.